In today's video, I'm going to be showing you how I switched out my Christmas lights for some of these Nebula projectors. Check it out. What's going on guys? I hope you're all doing well. This year I've been really behind on getting Christmas decorations up and just getting into that general festive Christmas spirit. But when a package arrived a couple of weeks ago containing not just one but two Nebula projectors, it gave me a great idea of how I can actually catch up and get into that Christmas spirit. Then he got an idea. An awful idea. Instead of just draping lights all over my house and have different batteries and switches and plugs just here, there and everywhere, why don't I instead use these projectors and just project my Christmas lights? And while we're at it, Rather than making use of remotes or switches or timers or any of that fun stuff, why don't we just chuck Home Assistant into the mix and have Home Assistant control these projectors? So that's what I did. The projectors that we're going to be looking at and using today are the brand new Nebula Capsule 3 and the brand new Nebula Mars 3 Air. And what's great about both of these projectors is the fact that they're totally portable. Each projector has a built-in battery that offers a runtime of approximately 2.5 hours and in my testing it has got quite close to this. Not only does containing a battery make both of these projectors super portable, but each projector also features autofocus and auto keystone correction, which allows the projector to pretty much project on any surface and automatically map the correct size or the size that it thinks is best for the area that it's pointing at. Straight out of the box, both projectors have all of the automatic settings turned on, and I'm not really sure why you'd actually turn them off, but if you do prefer doing the old school keystoning methods, where you actually have to manually position the cursors and manually position your screen sizes and focus, then you can turn these features off and you can do that. Another really cool feature that both of these projectors feature in their projector settings is the ability to try and avoid an obstacle. With this, if there's anything sat directly in front of it or just to the side, it will try and project the image around this image, so it will make a smaller screen off to one side so it totally misses whatever is in the way. The capsule's got a very small and sleek design, and it kind of looks a little bit like a Bluetooth speaker, and the Air features a larger square design with a little carry handle on the top. Both projectors provide a full output of 1080p and the capsule offers 200 anti-lumens whereas the Air doubles this at 400 anti-lumens. On paper, the Mars 3 Air is the clear winner, but when you have both of these projectors turned on and in a suitable environment, the capsule definitely gives the Mars a run for its money, but the Mars is just that bit brighter and a bit clearer. I mentioned that the capsule kind of looks like a Bluetooth speaker, which is actually quite funny because both of these projectors offer a Bluetooth mode that allows you to just connect directly to the projector and just play audio. They also have a dedicated button that allows them to do this and it kind of makes sense because Nebula is owned by Anchor who also makes Soundcore and because it has that Soundcore background, these projectors both also sound really good. In terms of audio levels and audio clarity, both projectors sound really good but again here with the Mars 3 Air, as it's the bigger one, it sounds a lot boomier and it's just a richer audio. One of the main selling points for both of these projectors is how portable and compact they are, but the other key selling point and the other feature that's advertised a lot is the fact that they support full Google TV and they're also one of the first projectors to support the fully native and fully certified Netflix app. And I know that sounds a little bit strange to have to say that it's a fully certified Netflix app, but if you've ever used any other form of portable projector, then you'll know that using the Netflix app has always been a faff. For inputs for both projectors, you're provided with a remote that will give you full access and control over all of the projector menus and settings. The remotes also have dedicated buttons to new features like Netflix and voice control. Accessories wise, both projectors don't come with anything additional other than the remotes and the required charging cables, but both projectors do have a universal mounting hole on the bottom that will allow you to connect it to a tripod or some other stand. On the top of both units you've got some capacitive buttons that will give you access to navigate around the menus and also to control the volume and on the back of both you've got a dedicated button for power and a dedicated button for that Bluetooth only mode. If you're after an enhanced audio experience with your projectors then both projectors actually allow you to connect to external Bluetooth speakers and they both also have an aux port so you can directly connect using that 3.5mm aux jack. Both units have got a USB 3.0 port, a HDMI port and a power port. 
In the case of the capsule, the power port is provided through the USB-C port, and on the Mars you've got a standard barrel jack connector, which comes with a much bulkier charging cable. For the size and the performance of both of these projectors, they're great. I personally prefer the Mars 3 Air over the capsule, but I'm a big fan of how portable the capsule actually is. The fact that you can just chuck it in your bag or fit it in your pocket makes it a device that you can pretty much take anywhere. And because you can wirelessly cast to it or plug straight into it, it definitely makes it a great device to have in terms of an outdoor cinema, going camping or just out and about on the move. Even though in their current setup both of the projectors are great, they're not perfect and I do have a couple of gripes with them. One of the first changes or design improvements that I'd make to the projectors would be to include some form of protection over the lens, maybe some kind of cap that you can attach or something you could slide up. Because they're both portable, you are likely to scratch or damage that lens. Another feature I'd like to see added or possibly changed with the design is some way of actually tilting or angling it. This could be with some form of mount or some kind of change to the body that would allow you to position it in a different orientation. There is another two gripes that I have with the projector and both of these are also to do with the design. The first one is the fact that there's no IP rating or dust rating on either projector. And because they're both portable and aimed at being portable devices, you would think that there would be some form of water protection, especially if they're going to be used outside. So I'd love to see this added in a future model or a future iteration of these projectors. The second part of my gripe is to do with the remote. When using the remote, sometimes I find that the menu response is a little bit sluggish and this only happens with the remote. It's like there's a small delay with the remote. If you're using the buttons on the top or you're using Home Assistant or even the Nebula app, there's no delay at all. For some strange reason with the design of the remote, Nebula only chose to light up some buttons, which again, if you're using this outside or in the dark, which you probably are because it's a projector, it's hard to actually remember which buttons are which. So it'd be nice if they actually chose to light up all of the buttons. So that's a quick skim through some of the technical features of both of these projectors and I'll have some links in the description if you want to go and check out the full listings for both of these and read upon the full information. But for now, let's jump into the automations. Before we start automating our projectors and adding them into Home Assistant, we're first going to need to decide what media we're actually going to be displaying. So this is going to be the media or the file that we're actually going to have running on our projector and this is going to give us our Christmassy lights or themes and effects. For my media, I wanted a Christmas video that I could just play on loop or just a series of short videos that were all the same theme and I could just click them all together in a playlist and then just cycle through them all. I had a look at a bunch of different ones that are available on YouTube, which are all available for free and a few other websites that offered free assets and videos, but none of them just matched the theme that I wanted. I then stumbled onto a website called Atmos Effects, which sells a series of Halloween and Christmas special effects and the Christmas videos that they have actually matched the vibe that I wanted. Now, these are quite expensive to buy, especially if you're buying a few of them, but what's nice about them is the fact that they're designed specifically for projectors, so you get a whole bunch of different choice in the files. With the files that you purchase, you get a few different orientations, and you also get a few different effects. So, for example, one of the Santa ones that I bought, you can have it with either a projected window in front of it or without, and the videos also come in the reverse format, so if you're projecting them onto a window, you don't have to flip the video yourself. I'll leave a link in the description to the assets that I made use of, and if you happen to know of any other matching or similar themed assets that don't cost as much, then let me know in the comments below. Now that we've got the media that we're going to be using, we can come back over to Home Assistant and we can add the projectors in. As I'm looking at both the capsule and the Mars 3 Air, I'll add both of those in now. So I've already got these set up and both of the projectors are online and on my network. So if I take a look at my notifications here, we can see that I've got one notification. And if we just select that, we'll see that we've got new devices discovered and we can just select check it out. And that will take us into our newly discovered devices. So this top one here, this D2325, I think this one is the Mars Air. So I'm just going to hit configure here. And this will tell me that it's discovered a brand new Android TV. And if you have the projector turned on, what will actually happen when you click submit now is on the projector screen, it will display a code that we can actually use to pair it to Home Assistant. So let's go ahead and do that now. Now, you can't actually see this, but on the Mars 3, it is actually showing me a code. So I can just go ahead and enter this code in here. And with that code entered, I can just press submit. And we should then hopefully see the success message telling me that it successfully added this device. So you can assign this to an area 
And for this particular projector, I'm going to be using it outside. So I'm going to assign it to my outside area. And now if we just scroll down, we can see that we've got this new integration for Android TV remote with one device. Selecting that will take us into the one device that we have. And I'm just going to rename this now because D2325 doesn't really make much sense to me. With the Mars Air 3 added in, I'm going to do the exact same thing with the capsule, making sure that it's on and connected to the network. And then it should appear as an integration and I can add that, enter the code, and that will also appear in my list. With both projectors added into Home Assistant, you'll see that we've got a series of different controls available to us. We've got a control for the media player, which will give us standard media controls, things like play, pause, volume. And then we've also got a remote control and the remote control will expose a switch and we can use the switch to turn the projector on and off. And this one's going to be very useful in our upcoming automations. So we've got our chosen media and we've got our projectors into Home Assistant. The next thing that we need to do is decide on the method that we're going to use or the protocol that we're going to use to take that media and just display it on the projectors. Because we're using Home Assistant, it opens up the doors to lots of different methods and protocols and services and all of those things that you can actually use to display that. I've opted to just make use of a very simple ADB command that will just open up VLC and it will open up a set URL which hosts the media that I'm using. For my projector automations, I created some very simple and very small automations that basically have a three sequence step. You could shorten this and simplify this, and you could also do things like make use of selectors to swap between the projectors and also swap between the media files. But again, just as a short and sweet example, it's a three sequence step. So the first thing that I do is turn on the specific projector. So in this case, it's the Nebula projector. So I target that little remote entity and just turn it on using a generic turn on. I then delay the whole sequence for five seconds. And the reason that I added this delay in was just to give the projector enough time to do its auto keystone in and auto focus without it ruining any of the effects or skipping any of the video. The final step in my sequence is to use the remote on service and I target the specific projector. So again, the Nebula capsule. And then I use the activity of VLC followed by a URL. And this particular URL just hosts a bit of media, which in this case is the Christmas.mp4. So nice and simple, nice and straightforward. It's just turning the device on and then firing that little URL to get it to play a specific bit of media. Again, you could enhance this further. You could use selectors and there's a whole lot of other things you could do. But I just wanted to make sweet, short and simple, a one button click and it'll do what I want it to do. To have the media stop playing and have the projectors turn off when I'm finished, I pretty much just do the opposite. So I make use of the media player stop command and have that target the nebula. And then I also just use a generic turn off and have it turn off that little remote switch. And this will turn the projector off. You can see just by making use of some very simple automations that we can turn the projector on remotely. We can have it play a specific bit of media. And if we want to, we can stop that media and have the projector turn off. Because we've got that power, we can then take those automations and we can further combine them with other things. So we could have it turn on a whole series of lights. You could combine it with an outdoor motion sensor and have a projection start playing when somebody's approaching or the same when somebody's leaving. As with every other Home Assistant project, you're only limited by your imagination and your wallet because these things can be quite expensive. Now that we've got our simple automation set up, let's have a look at this project in action. And it might very well be this part of the video where you're thinking to yourself, hang on a minute, Mark, you said that these projectors don't have any IP rating. Why are you just leaving them outside? And yes, you're correct. If it was to rain, then these projectors would get wet and probably be ruined. But for the purposes of this video, I recorded without using anything on them, just so it was all natural. For my setup, I also devised some clever automations that would alert me if it was going to rain or if I was expected rain over the next couple of hours. That way I could just bring them in. I also picked up some of these outdoor projector enclosures which keep the projectors nice and safe and dry and free from any outdoor weathering and it allows the projection to pass through the glass without any distortion or blurring. My solution won't be for everybody and definitely having this large projector box isn't the most attractive things. You can pick up other smaller ones but this is the one that I have. And with that said, let's get back to the montage.
And there we go guys, that's been a quick look at two of Nebula's latest projectors and how I've used them with Home Assistant to further enhance and automate my Christmas lighting. If you enjoyed the video then don't forget to drop me a like and if you're not already, hit that subscribe button and ding dong the notification bell and you'll be alerted to any future video that I do. As always, a massive thank you to these awesome dudes. These awesome dudes are my Patreons and also my YouTube members and if you're interested in helping support my channel, which in turn allows me to create content like this, then you'll find links to all the places that you can go to support me, all in the description below. Thank you for watching and I'll catch you in the next one. Cheers.